here's lesson two of the log function unit in the advanced functions course. We're going to look at the power law of logarithms in this lesson. I'm going to start this lesson off by just doing an example where I'm actually going to use the power law. Then we'll explicitly define it and give you a proof of why I was able to do that. So example one says, suppose you invest $100 into an account that pays 5% interest compounded annually. The amount A in dollars in the account after any given time T in years is given by this function. How long will it take for the amount in this account to double? So notice it starts at 100. It's being paid that 5% interest once a year. So how long until that 100 doubles? So I'll set the equation equal to 200 and I will solve this equation. And there's a few different ways to solve this equation or a few different ways to actually show how you solve it. I'm just going to do the power law of logs to solve this equation. Before I do that, I would have to divide both sides by 100 to get 2 equals 1.05 to the power of t. And when the unknown exponent is in the variable, there's a few ways to solve this, guessing and checking, rewriting in logarithmic form, or using what's called the power law of logarithms. And that's what I'm going to do for this one to show you that it actually works. And then I'll prove to you why I was allowed to do it after. What I'm going to do for this is take the log of both sides Remember when solving equations, you can do whatever you want as long as you do it to both sides, as long as you keep the equation balanced. So I have log of two on the left equals log of this power, 1.05 to the power of t on the right. So I took log of both sides, that's fine, kept the equation balanced. Now the power rule of logarithms tells me if the argument of the log is a power, I'm allowed to take the exponent of that power and write it as the coefficient of the log. So I would now have log of two equals t multiplied by log of 1.05. Using this power law of log is useful because it solves the problem of having the unknown in an exponent. It's now out of the exponent. It's now a coefficient of a log. And remember log of two and log of 1.05, those are just numbers. So treat them as numbers. We can just divide both sides by log of 1.05. And if I do that, I would get log of two divided by log of 1.05 equals t. So I can evaluate t by just finding the quotient of those log expressions. And I'll use my calculator for that. So I want to do log of two divided by log of 1.05, and that will give me the answer 14.2 approximately. So t is about 14.2, and what units are we in here? I, oh, we're in years, right? 14.2 years. So in 14.2 years, the amount in the account will have doubled. It'll have gone from 100 to 200. Now let's focus in on this, this rule I did where I brought that exponent of the argument down, wrote it as the coefficient of the log. That's called the power law of logarithms. And here's the rule written out for you. The rule tells you, you can take the exponent of the argument, write it as the coefficient of the log, and get that expression. And let me give you a proof of that. Let me prove to you that we are in fact allowed to do that. So let's say we have this expression, w equals log base b of x, where w and b are some numbers, and x is our variable. Let's start by rewriting this equivalently, but in exponential form. Well, this expression means that b to the power of w equals x. That's what that equation means. So I can rewrite it in exponential form as b to the power of w equals x. The next step says raise both sides to the power of n. Sure, why not? As long as I do it to both sides, we're allowed to do that. So b to the w to the n equals x to the n. And then the power law of exponents tells me that if I have a power of a power, I can multiply the exponents together. So b to the power of w times n equals x to the n. And now I'm going to rewrite this equivalently back in logarithmic form. So I'm going to write it as log base b of x to the n equals the exponent on base b, so equals wn. So if we read this expression, we see that it's equivalent to the line above, right? This logarithmic equation tells me that that's the exponent that goes on the base of the log to get the argument. And that's exactly what we see here. So you can see that they're equivalent. And now last step, let me replace w with what we know it's equal to. We know w is equal to log base b of x. 
So I'm going to rewrite this log base b of x to the n is equal to, let me change this w to log base b of x. So log base b of x times n. And actually, let me just move that n to the front. Let me write that as the first factor in our product. That way you can fully see the power law of logs. Notice, log base b of x to the n equals n times log base b of x. We can see that if you just take this exponent and bring it down, it's the same as this. So we just proved the power law of logarithms. Let me show you how we can use that rule. Example two says evaluate each of the following. And we're going to evaluate these without a calculator because it's really going to help you understand logarithms well. Method one says simplify and evaluate using rules from last lesson. Hopefully you recognize that rule. Can you see why the answer to this is just B? Because a logarithmic expression, when you evaluate it, you're figuring out what exponent goes on the base to get that. Well, obviously an exponent of B on A would give us A to the B. That's why the answer to this is B. So if I can rewrite this nine as a power that's the same base as the base of the log, I'll be able to solve this equation. So I'm just going to rewrite, I've got log base three of nine to the four. That's the question. Let me rewrite that nine. Well, nine is three squared and I'm changing it to a base three power because three is the base of the log. So log base three of three squared to the four. And then the power of a power rule tells me I can multiply that two and the four together. And that is eight. Oh, and now notice I have log base three of three to the eight. Since the base of the log and the base of the power in the argument are the same number, the answer is the exponent on the power in the argument. So my answer is eight. And logically that should make sense because what exponent goes on that to make it look like that? Eight. 3 to the 8 equals 3 to the 8. That's why the answer to that is 8. Another way we could have done this question. So let's start at this line again. Let me rewrite the question. The question was log base 3 of 9 to the 4. At this step, I could have taken the exponent on the power in the argument and rewritten it as the coefficient of the log. That's the power rule of logarithms. So I could have rewritten this as 4 log base 3 of 9. And then I could have evaluated log base three of nine. Well, I know that's two because really what this means, it means what exponent goes on three to get nine. Well, three squared is nine. So I know log base three of nine is two. But let me just communicate that to you clearly by rewriting that nine as a three squared. And log base three of three squared, what exponent goes on three to get three to the power of two? Well, that's two. So I have four times two, which is eight. Same answer, just different way of communicating that answer. Let's try a couple more. And we can do, we'll practice both methods again. This one, let's not use the power law. Let's just start right off the bat by changing that eight to a base two power so that the base of the power is the same as the base of the log. So I've got log base two of, and remember eight is actually two cubed. So I could rewrite that eight as two cubed. So it's a two to the three to the five. And the power of a power rule tells me I can multiply those exponents. So that would be two to the 15. And now I can see that the answer to this is 15. 15 is the exponent that goes on two to get two to the 15. Let's do part C differently. Let's use the power law of logarithms. And it's going to be important that you understand that a square root symbol is actually an exponent of a half. So let me rewrite it in that format. And now let's use the power rule, which tells us I'm allowed to take this exponent and write it as the coefficient of the log. So I have a half multiplied by log base five of 125. And log base five of 125, that's three, because that's the exponent that goes on five to get 125. But let me just write this intermediate line to prove that to you. 125, we could rewrite as five cubed. And then that shows us that the value of that logarithmic part of this expression is just three. Three is the exponent that goes on five to get five cubed. So I've got a half times three, which is three halves or 1.5. Okay, let's shift back a little bit. Let's think back to example one. This was example one. And I want you to look at this equation. We had this equation. We took log of both sides, brought the exponent down using the power rule and we got to this line. There's a much faster way to do this question. 
we could have just rewritten this in logarithmic form. So rewriting that in logarithmic form would be log base 1.05 of 2 equals the exponent t. Hopefully by now you can understand that these two equations mean the exact same thing. In logarithmic form we see that t is the exponent that goes on the base of the log to get the argument, and that's exactly what this is. t is the exponent that goes on 1.05 to get 2. So we could have rewritten it like this right off the bat, and then tried to evaluate that. But here's the problem. Not all calculators have the button I'm about to show you. Not all calculators have the button where you can actually change the base to whatever you want. Right? I can get this 14.2 value just by typing log base 1.05 of 2. And that's the answer we got when we did example 1. But notice we didn't actually type log base 1.05 of 2 when we did example 1. We typed this. And if we follow the change of base formula, you'll see that this and log 2 divided by log 1.05, oh, and actually it's already above there on the screen, it's the same thing. But I was able to evaluate log base 1.05 of 2 without having to change its base. I just used the common logarithm log base 10, and all calculators have the log base 10 button. So if your calculator doesn't let you change the base, you'll have to evaluate something like this by using this formula, the change of base formula, which only involves the common logarithm. So that's what this explains to you. So we could have written in logarithmic form, but unfortunately there's no easy way to change 2 to a power with a base 1.05, right? It's not easy like these last ones where we could change 8 to 2 cubed, and we could change 125 to 5 cubed. It's not easy to change 2 to a power of 1.05. So we'd have to ask our calculator to do it for us. We'd have to ask our calculator what exponent goes on 1.05 to get 2. And like I said, we can do that two ways. Sometimes you can actually just type this on your calculator, but some calculators don't let you do that because some calculators only let you evaluate logarithms that are base 10. So you'd have to use the change of base formula, which is this. We can rewrite a log that has any base as a quotient of common logarithms if you take the argument of the log make it the argument of that logarithm and take the base of the log, make it the argument of that logarithm. And notice in this quotient, the base of both of those logs is 10. I mean, it could be anything, but we make it 10 because that's the button most calculators have. So long story short, those two things are equivalent to each other. So if we want to evaluate log base 5 of 17, two ways to do it. Type that exactly as it is on your calculator. and we get 1.76. Or maybe you don't have the button that allows you to change the base on your calculator. So you would have to use what's called the change of base formula and rewrite this as log base 10 of 17 divided by log base 10 of 5. And notice I said they're base 10, but I didn't write the 10 because if the base is 10, you don't have to write it. That's the common logarithm. And then all calculators have just your normal common logarithm button. So we do log 17 divided by log 5, and that'll give us the exact same answer. So it's about 1.76. B, let's use the change of base formula again. Log of 10 divided by log of a half. And if we evaluate this, well, log of 10, that's actually just 1, right? I could have just written 1, divided by log a half. And I get negative 3.32, approximately. Negative 3.32. And let me just prove to you that that is, in fact, equal to what we wanted. Right? We wanted log base a half of 10, the negative 3.32. Now let me show you something interesting about part A and the change of base formula. So when we wanted to evaluate log base 5 of 17, we did log 17 divided by log 5. Great, and we got 1.76. When we did the change of base formula, we made the bases both 10 by using the common log button. But we didn't have to. We could have made the bases whatever we wanted to. Like, let me show you. If I had have done log base 83 of 17, 
If I divide that by log, as long as it's the same base, so 83 of 5, same answer. So the bases in the change of base formula don't have to be 10. They can be anything you want as long as they're the same number. We just choose to make them 10 because we know all calculators have that button. The last example of this lesson, solve for y in this equation. So there's two ways we can do this, the long way or the short way. Long way, like we did at the very beginning of the lesson, let's take log of both sides, then use the power rule of logs, take that exponent, move it out front. Oh, and log 100, log 100, that just means what exponent goes on 10 to get 100? That's 2. So I'm going to change log 100 to 2. So 2 equals y log of 2. Divide both sides by log 2 to isolate the y. I'd have y equals 2 over log of 2. And then I would evaluate that. 2 divided by log of 2. And we get 6.64, approximately. Now, let me show you how we could have got this exact same answer without having to use the power rule of logarithms. Just right off the bat, rewrite the exponential equation in logarithmic form. So the exponent's the answer to the log with a base of 2 argument of 100. This means y is the exponent that goes on 2 to get 100, which is exactly what's written there. And now we just have to evaluate what exponent goes on 2 to get 100. So there's two ways to do that. Either type it exactly like that on your calculator or use the change of base formula which would be log 100 over log 2, which is, do you notice that's exactly what we did over here? Remember this 2 was actually a log 100, right? This 2 is actually log 100. Log 100 is 2. So notice this line, this line, exactly the same. So of course we're going to get the same answer. Log 100 divided by log 2, same answer, 6.64. And then when solving an equation, you should always check and make sure you got the right answer. Is 2 to that power equal to 100? Let's check. Is 2 to that exponent I got equal to 100? It is. Okay, that's it for that lesson. Hopefully you now understand how to use the power law of logarithms. And also, you understand how to transition between exponential and logarithmic equations.